Hey guys, welcome to another exciting episode of the Three Questions Show. Today joining me is Damon Green from Washington DC in the United States. Damon is a medical safety surveillance officer with a private biotech company. I think this is the first time that he is doing something like like, you know, podcast, isn't it Damon? This is the first time I've been a part of a Zoom meeting that was being recorded or I was actually given a presentation. I have a I just um started a uh YouTube channel. Oh yeah. Well, what is that about? So, um I'm a Christian and so I talk about topics that are at least um um biblical related, biblically related and um it's so it it's more like maybe an impromptu or informal kind of a Bible study. Right, great. Well, I think it's always good for people to know more about the teachings of Christ. So, you know, keep up with it. Uh, really awesome work. So, can we get started, Damon? So, I'd like you to give a small introduction, you know, tell who you are, what what is it that you do? My name is Damon Green, and I was uh born and raised in Buffalo, New York, and did just about all of my education in this uh DC, Maryland, Virginia um area um i went to howard university for undergrad and university of maryland for medical school i specialized as an anesthesiologist and i practiced anesthesia oh for about 11 to 12 years after residency or during my time of practice i did a residency in preventive medicine and that introduced me to public health practice and the opportunities that opened for me ended up being in the pharma pharmaceutical industry. First beginning with the FDA, I worked in the U.S. Food and Drug Administration doing pharmacovigilance. Moving from the FDA, now I work um, um, at a small biotech. Um, and so for them, what I do for them is is that work. I do pharmacovigilance for them. Um, so that's, that's, that's where I am now. Oh, great. So you're a medical doctor who's now into safety and surveillance practices, isn't it? You, you'd be surprised. You know, um, pharmaceuticals, biotechs, you know, involving drugs or, or any kind of healthcare um, product, whether it's a device or drug, it's health related. So, you know, physicians are used in those spaces. Well, so I'm, I'm kind of sure that you'll be very busy, given that we're in the middle of a pandemic. Uh, your work must be like super important right now, isn't it? Exactly. <laughs> e- exactly. Right. One 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 more thing I can say about that is so the, right. the the change the difference is is that you go from clinical practice and taking care of individual patients um, and preventive medicine instead of taking care of a patient, which you do you learn how to take care of a population. And so wherever the healthcare of a population is involved, you will see preventive medicine Great. docs. Great. Okay, Damon. Uh, let's just get started with the first question. So my first question to you, Damon, is about freedom. Damon, being an African-American a citizen of the United States, what does freedom mean to you? So that question is so complicated. Um, <laughs> it's, a, it's, it, it's an easy ask, but it's a complicated answer to that. So, I, you know, I, I'll start this way. I, I see it in two different levels. One is this freedom that it applies socially. Mm-hmm. Um, more of a societal, social um, aspect of freedom, where, you know, the, the first thing you think of when you hear freedom, you think the the freedom to do what, where, when, how, whatever you want to, whenever you want to, anything you ever wanted to do. There are caveats. Mm-hmm. So, you know, because you can very well turn around and say, well, I'm free to do this thing. Someone can turn around and say, I'm free to kill or, you know, yeah. that kind of thing. And so, you know, just the reality of that is that it has to be guided or guarded by such rules and regulations. And, and when you talk about the institution of slavery and racism and so on and so forth, you think about freedom in the context of being able to have choices and to not only have those choices, but to be able to pursue or exercise those choices. So, you know, that's a social aspect yeah. um, that I have. And then I look at freedom at a very individual level where you have freedom in your heart and mind. For example, um, where you are not hindered or obstructed um, individually. 
and your thoughts and in your perceptions and that kind of thing. And, and of course, being able to be that way is a reflection of what's happening in your environment and around and what's happening socially. So for an example, if say I am in a, a, a job and as far as life is concerned, I work this job, it helps me take care of my family, it helps me achieve the things that I want to. But in this job, I see that there's nowhere else to go. Like if I wanted to do something else, that like this is all I have available to me. And so the hindrance is that, you know, this is the thought that I have no other choices. I have no other um, alternative and no aspect nor no hope for anything else. This is all that I have. So the freedom will come in where you realize that, you know, I, I can go in another direction. I can do something else. I can, uh, you know, attempt to do something else without being hindered or whatever. I can, whether that be through um, education or opportunity um, that comes your way, but, but, it, but it comes. And so, it, so it's, it's very individual in the sense that there are things that you are exposed to and have to deal with in your surroundings and in, in, in your environment. And you can't do anything, you are limited on what you can do with your environment or with your surroundings, but you can be free in your head and your mind and feel like, well, I, I, I see no reason why I couldn't try. Right. Um, but if you feel like if you live a life where, where everything seems to always have this limit, like this is, this is all that I've seen, so this is all that I probably can be, mm -hmm. then you live caged. Um, without ever being in a cage. So so freedom applies socially, but it also is very individual too. Perfect, perfect, uh, Damon. I don't think anyone could have put it better. So you beautifully explained freedom in terms of an individual as well as in a part of the society. Uh, I applaud your answer. Thank you so much for that insight. So moving on to your second question. So my second question is, Damon, about uh, entrepreneurship. And uh, especially, you know, young people, the next generation, I would say, you can see that they are a lot of young people who want to take, you know, their life into their own hands, their career should be, you know, a product of their work, uh, they don't want to work for someone else. So there's a lot of budding entrepreneurs, you know, in the present, uh, the younger generation. What would your advice be to those budding young entrepreneurs in 2020? So I, I would think that um, to remain entrepreneurial, okay. um, you know, means that you, you have to stay in this realm of, of being innovative and having ideas and having imagination and, and so on. So to remain entrepreneurial, I think one of maybe the primary thing to be, and I, I'm learning this myself, but what I understand is that one thing that I think should happen is that you remain teachable, always, always learning, always, because that is the kind of thing that will help feed imagination and help feed innovation. When you mm -hmm. learn and you understand what you are having to contend with, so you want to get into a particular line of work or a particular industry, well, if you learn enough about the industry, then it becomes easier for you to innovate about how can I get in, how can I find my place and 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 make my niche in that um, particular industry you know it's it's sort of exposure but it's also feeding um, an imagination or uh, innovation to help you find your individual place help because it helps inspire and helps feel and helps helps give direction i think it just feeds into entrepreneurship so i think that's the one thing i could i would advise is remain teachable you know don't become a know-it-all. You, I think that's a <laughs> unnecessary limitation. Remain teachable and be always learning. I, you know, you uh, you go toward knowledge and understanding, and then that becomes wisdom. And so I know being an entrepreneur and being established takes making some wise choices as well as risk taking. But the risk can be limited by being able to make wise choices. And you don't gain that kind of wisdom without learning something first. Yeah, without being teachable, right? Um, so if your mind is closed, you're not going to be uh, yeah, uh, yeah. able to learn anything new. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so moving on to my third question. What is a feature film that you really love and what lesson did you take away from it? 
But the one movie that keeps coming to mind, probably my favorite movie, is the Lord of the Rings trilogy. And the very last scene where um, where Frodo surprised his his friends by a lot, letting them know that he was actually leaving them, um, going on this same ship that the elves went on to wherever their place is. And, you know, everyone who had anything to do with that time of fight and struggle Mm -hmm. that the story talked about. And now that the fight and struggle was over, they feel like their time has passed, that they moved on to somewhere else that you don't know where they moved on to, you know, it's like beyond the sunset. Well, I want to know what's going to be happening when they get to this other place. I want to, <laughs> I want to, I want to know the next thing. <laughs> yeah. Same here. Like, uh, we want Lord of the Rings part four. <laughs> um, so I think the effect that it really has on me is, or, or the thing that I see from that are, is that things happen in life, major um, issues that you have to confront, things that you have to go through, um, things like that, and they are life changing, and it changes you to the extent that you're really not the same anymore. Like you can go, try to go back to the life as is, and you won't fit. This COVID nineteen situation around the around the globe is one of these kind of situations that, for a lot of people, it's going to be life changing, and you won't. It is going to change you to the point that you will not be able to go back to things the way they used to be, you will not be able to fit. And so having to accept that things have changed and that it's time to actually move on to the next thing, whatever the next thing is, that scene reminded me of that. It's, you know, there's some things you have to let go and you have to move on to the right. next thing. Yeah, yeah certainly. Because moving on to the next phase of your life essentially means you cannot afford to fall back into your old ways and it it sometimes would mean completely cutting off whatever that it is that was affecting you or keeping you as the person that you were and you know just letting go yeah yeah okay you can ask me one of the questions back now i don't know which one to ask you i think i, I thought maybe the freedom question how would you answer this like oh. i know i i have i thought you were going to ask me the movie question <laughs> <laughs> but look, but look, I I know in India there are, are different shades. Yeah. And so, you know, some of these issues could apply there. Hmm. Okay, you know, in India, it's, um, it's a little bit more complex because um, we have not just uh, race divides, you know, we are divided with, by caste, by religion, by states, by food, ethnicity. I don't know, there's so many different barriers, social barriers. And then also, there's a huge uh, difference between living in a, an urban and a rural kind of a setting where obviously, you know, there's going to be more of a, you know, a stricter, more traditional way of looking at things uh, when it comes to living in, you know, uh, not very urbanized environments. Now, that being said, I feel definitely India is changing. There's so much of progress that we have seen in the last two decades. Um, we have come a long way with respect to social injustices and uh, freedom, freedom for women, freedom for ordinary people. Uh, There's definitely, you know, we have uh, progressed leaps and bounds. Uh, I think there's still a lot more work that can be done and uh, people should be able to feel uh, free uh, to criticize um, the people in authority. People should not just feel free to question those in power but should also have complete uh, freedom to change that structure of power if things are not going well for you know majority of the citizens. And um, I think um, one way, of course, you know, we have very uh, good free and fair elections that happen, which has ensured change of uh, power in almost every state and in the center. It's not like some government can you know just cling on to power forever and ever. It doesn't happen that way. The the people's uh, voice is, is heard in, in India. Um, so I think uh, we are definitely enjoying certain level of freedom, but uh, th- there is a lot of work that can be done uh, since I feel personally that uh, there could be more awareness on, uh, there could be more awareness in eliminating differences between people from various regions of the country 
eliminating differences between people who are from different social classes and eliminating differences from people who belong to different castes. And, but overall, I think uh, we have done a great job and, you know, we're as a country working towards uh, making our citizens uh, feel more free and uh, enjoy every aspect of freedom that there is to enjoy. Okay, Raymond. Uh, well, um, I'm going to let you go. I know your day would be filled with things to do. So, but thank you so much for coming. Yeah.